Good afternoon. My name is Dave Upton. My wife, Lana, and I have been members of uh, the church here at Alexander City for the last seven years and are so excited to be a part of Cornerstone First Global Methodist Church. I am the chairman of the Staff Parish Relations Committee uh, and really love doing all the work we have here at the church. I was asked to speak during the stewardship campaign and I want to talk about three things today. The first is the importance of pledging. One of the things that's a challenge in our church is in spite of having a large percentage of our membership that actually give to the church, not nearly as large amount pledge. And you may think, well, what does it matter as long as I give whether or not I pledge or not? And what I would tell you is it's very difficult as a church leadership team to be able to plan appropriately. It'd be like trying to have your household budget if you didn't know what your income was going to be every month. And so we really are asking people to please step forward and make a pledge. A pledge is just an estimate of giving. It's what you intend to give in 2024. So a couple of things that I just want to kind of just rules of the road so I think it will ease people's minds maybe. The first one is there is only one person in the church who knows what you give. That is Jeb Blankenship, who is the church's financial administrator. So it's not something that people know. It's, it's private, it's confidential, and that's the only person that knows. The second thing that I want to let you know is I've heard people say, well, I don't want to feel like I, you know, if, if, if something happens in my financial life and I'm not able to fulfill the pledge that I'm going to be getting called by the church and asking why am I behind or whatever, no one will call you and ask you that ever. Uh, what you give and your fulfillment of your pledge is between you and God. And certainly if, if, if exigent circumstances occur and put you in a position to not be able to fill it, fulfill it, certainly there would be no issue with that at all. So I just want to remove any potential inhibitions that people may have to being feeling like they can pledge. Because if we had a good estimate of what each family in the church was going to give in 2024, we will have so much more headlights to be able to see how we should plan, budget, staff, plan repairs and maintenance, all kinds of programs like that. Uh, we can do a much uh, more effective job as good stewards of the givings uh, to make sure they're used properly. The second thing I wanted to talk about is how to become a tithing Christian. I remember when I was young and early in my faith walk, and, and, and I would hear the, you know, we have stewardship campaigns and people would talk about uh, the, the biblical imperative to give 10% of your earnings. And it just seemed like, oh, how could I ever get there? I've got all these young children and I've got expenses and, and there's just no way I could ever get there. And what I would tell you is that there are a few things that you have to do to become a tithing Christian. The first one is you have to start giving. At whatever level you give. I thought David Hand's presentation a couple of Sundays ago when he talked about when he started at 3% of his income. And then he grew that each year. To give you an example, if you started with 3% of your income and every year you added 1% to it, in seven years you would be a full tithing Christian. It, re it requires taking the first step to be able to get there. If you're giving now, we would like to ask you if you would consider to increase your pledge. The chart that we're showing now on the screen shows giving in the church by various giving levels. And you'll see below that the number of families or individuals who have given within that band of giving. It's interesting that we put it on a step chart because if everyone in the church finds yourself and where you fall on this chart... If every family in the church would take one step up to the next step, that would raise an additional $226,000 for the 2024 budget over what we have available this year, putting us in a much better financial shape and a much better position to be able to continue to grow the kingdom of God here at Cornerstone. The money is there. We don't have to worry about it. It's there. What we have to do is we have to try to find a way to get it out of our wallets and into the collection plate. The last thing I'd like to say in the, in the third item is the importance of giving as it, as it relates to growing in our own faith journey. 
My favorite scripture as it relates to giving is Malachi 3.10. What a bold and direct challenge God gives us. Let me read the scripture to you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. When we increase our giving, it almost always means we have prioritized our gifts to God over some other want or need. It means we have sacrificed something. Sacrificial giving helps us keep our relationship with God in the proper perspective. We have been so richly blessed as individuals and as a new congregation here at Cornerstone in our personal lives. Let us show thanks by stepping up and giving as we are all individually able for the glory of God here at Cornerstone. I hope you and your family will prayerfully consider pledging this year and taking a step up if you are able. Let's all try to keep in the forefront the challenge from Malachi 310. I'm going to say it one more time because I think it's such a bold challenge to us. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I pray for our church, I pray for our congregation, and I pray for this campaign. Thank you all. Good day.